Seiza Isaza. I'm sorry. Good evening, esteemed members of the legislature, ladies and gentlemen of the public. My name is Stella Isaza. Um, I am a single practitioner. I have my office in Poughkeepsie. I reside in Pine Plains. Um, I was a former assistant corporation counsel for the city of Poughkeepsie. On, on one occasion, I was um, of counsel to David Sears, uh, legislative counsel to the county legislature. And thank you for allowing me to speak to you on the issue of the 18B panel versus uh, the Defender Office. Um, this is an ongoing uh, crisis within New York State that goes even before Rosenblatt's commission on the study on the feasibility of the public defender and what's going on with the New York State legal system. Um, back in 2006, um, there was a Spangenberg Group study commissioned by Chief Judge Case Commission on the Future of Indigent Defense Services, focusing on the criminal aspect of the defense in New York State. And it's a very worthy study, but it, it pretty much tells you the genesis of what the state of affairs was with uh, representation in New York State. It was pretty much fragmented, it was inconsistent, there was no uniformity, no standardization in legal, re legal representation for the indigent. And thus this commission made certain recommendations, including the Honorable Lippmann. Honorable Lippmann uh, made recommendations as to why the uh, $40 an hour uh, rate afforded to the 18B panel attorneys was, so, was woefully inadequate for the expertise and the demands of the job and, and criminal defense. But now we're talking about family court. Family court is, um, is, is a very complex case. It's a civil proceeding, it's not criminal, but there is a criminal aspect because sometimes the victim of domestic violence has recourses not only in family court for protection, but also in the criminal aspect. Um, they, they seek protection in criminal courts. Um, as an attorney in family court, uh, I had represented a victim of domestic violence who uh, actually was murdered in Wappingers. And the, the victim's name is Maria Alvarez Ruiz Alvarez. And uh, she had two kids and uh, it went through the criminal procedure, but I was her uh, family court attorney. Notwithstanding the fact that I actually taken her to many of the services, crime victims, um, battered women's services, the use of a 911 cell phone. Um, she, she fell victim to, you know, to a person who, uh, a partner, and uh, was murdered. He's now serving time, you know, 18 to 25, but it was a high profile case. That was the dog case. Uh, they were going to therapy dog for helping the girls testify against him. But this is something that we face every day, and, um, and I believe that with the assignment of a public defender office, the legislature must look at, just like um, any attorney for the legislature would advise the um, members of the council, is to look at the cost. If we establish a public defender office with just two lawyers at $100,000, and then you start adding the line items to add dental, optical, insurance, CLE courses, you're adding up to $72,000. So for two attorneys with little experience, the budget is 172 with the proposed salary at 30 to 35,000. Um, I'm asking to the legislature to please reconsider that because just by creating that office, you're going to have streams and streams of conflicts which would necessitate and ma be mandated by the state uh, to create a conflict office. So now you're adding one bureaucratic unit on top of another. So I don't see where the cost savings is. Um, this is a case where family lawyers have a many, many years of experience, sometimes going into civil, other civil aspects with collateral consequences, including immigration, uh, partition actions, if there's a real estate uh, between them, they're not married. And, and having someone fresh out of law school to really look at those issues, that's pretty much almost committing malpractice and putting the victims of domestic violence at risk. Thank you for your time and attention.